Sports Nation. Welcome to Mailbox Sunday. Tune in as Dr. Jackson equips you with the necessary tools that will enable you to maintain discipline, knowledge, and continuous growth. In the second hour, join us for Renaissance Relationship Therapy with life coach Tim T. As he shares relationship views that will inspire, enlighten, change, and even surprise you on what you thought about your relationship. Finally, in a prime hour, join Pastor Kenny Smith for Practical Principles for Kingdom Living. Tune in as Pastor Smith shares principles designed to help build your relationship with God and others. Source Nation, here are your hosts, Dr. Terry Jackson, Life Coach Tim T., and Pastor Kenny Smith. Good evening, Source Nation. I'm your host, Dr. Terry Jackson, and I'd like to welcome you to It's Your Time. Time is an acronym for Transform, Inspire, Motivate, and Empower. Tonight we have another exciting topic for you. Tonight we will be discussing personal development, developing a new technology. How does it facilitate personal development? Before we go any further, let me thank our sponsors who have made this show possible, and they are Scott Cares Foundation, Meet My Type Matchmaking, Urban Grandstand Digital, Cat Photography, Hit Masters, New Covenant of Praise Worship Center, and TS Photography. Source Nation, be sure to join us live every other Monday from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time for our newest show, Love Zone Mondays, with host Kathy B. and Dr. Yvonne Young. Tune in as Dr. Young speaks with us about applying principles to strength and restoring our relationships as we strive for longevity and success. Well, tonight, I'm excited to have as a guest Mr. Joy White. He is the founder of OurTime.com. And OurTime is a social media platform very similar to Facebook, but it has many more capabilities. So I look forward to speaking with him uh, in the studio tonight. So be sure to give us a call at 619-924-0933. Press option one if you have a question or if you would like to make a comment. We're going to take a quick break, and after that break, I will be back to talk about developing a new technology. How does it facilitate personal growth with founder of OurTime.com, Mr. Joey White. Source Nation, stay tuned. We'll be right back. You're listening live to Mailbox Sundays with Dr. Terry Jackson, Life Coach Tim T., and Pastor Kenny Smith. Source Radio Network is just one of the many platforms that is used to fulfill dreams of our listeners and create a purpose that will impact the lives of our communities, cities, and the world. It is often said that great things will happen when a group of driven people work together to accomplish one goal. We're giving people the opportunity to have a voice, translate words that haven't been heard, and paint pictures that no one has seen. Source Radio Network is fueling your life's purpose. How can you listen? www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash source radio. Hey you, do you know your history? Do you know your culture? We have a beautiful history, full of triumph, determination, perseverance, love, hope, faith, family, and community. And as your great griot, I want to share that history with you. A griot? It's pronounced griot, or in English, a griot. It's a West African term for the person who keeps up with the genealogy, the history, the culture, shares the stories of the people, and so much more. We're like a walk-in library, full of knowledge and ready to share. 
I'm going to take you into the history and the culture of your people from all over the world. A griot's purpose is to serve the people. That's right. As the great griot, I am here to serve you. Because the more you know, the more you grow. Wait, that's not my quote. Oh well, it's the truth. The Great Grio, a brand new Black History Web series. Check us out online at www.thegreatgrio.com or subscribe to us on YouTube at youtube.com slash thegreatgrio.
Welcome back, Source Nation. You're listening live to Mailbox Sundays with your host, Dr. Terry Jackson, Life Coach Tim T., and Pastor Kenny Smith. Welcome back, Source Nation. As I stated before the break, our special guest is Joey White, and he is in the studio with us tonight. Joey White is the founder of OurTime.com. Mr. Joey White, how are you this evening? Oh, how you doing there, Brother Terry? How you doing? Thank you for uh, inviting me to your show. Yes, sir. You're welcome. You are so very welcome. So, you know, tell us a little bit about your background and what was it that really gave you the motivation to create OurTime.com? Well, it's, it's Our Time now. Dot com, but our time. Uh, I, I apologize. Yeah. Everybody, don't 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 go to ourtime.com or you'll be going to an old uh, old people dating site. <laughs> everybody <laughs> think that, everybody think that you were you were just playing with them today. <laughs> uh, yeah, but my background basically, you know, I'm just like everybody else. Uh, you know, I'm from LA. I'm from Watts actually. Went to the military as a teenage parent. <laughs> I had to do something with mm, myself okay. to get out of the hood. So I went okay. to the military and, uh, you know, spent some time there. And after I got out of the military, I basically was, you know, just jumping around from job to job, you know, selling cars, doing home loans, things like that. Um, I just graduated from college, so I just got my bachelor's so, because I had to do something to, you know, educate myself because I can't help my people if I'm not if I'm not awake at the wheel myself. And uh, four years ago, uh I was sitting on Facebook talking to some friends and, you know, about the different things that were going on on Facebook at the time. Um, it seemed like everybody um, was getting suspended, banned, blocked, whatever, for posting, you know, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King vi- uh, videos, quotes, and things like that. So we were like, what? Oh, you know, we need our own. And uh, I was the first person to actually move to, to go investigate it. And there was no black social media sites out there, to my knowledge anyway, and as far as I I, I know, there weren't any. Um, so I decided to try to see how you can actually create a website. Now, I'm not that technical um, as far as computer science and things like that, so, you know, I had to get some assistance from four corners of the world almost to try to get it <laughs> going. But once I did, you know, I put the word out and said, hey, you know, I created it, and, you know, come on and, and join me, and, you know, it's it's been a slow a slow process, but it's a it's a process. Okay. Well, well, let me ask you this question because you you talked about uh, you're not that technical, yet you had the desire to create uh, social media networks. So, so tell me about what it was you had to learn in order to be able to create the site, as well as how did you collaborate with others from the four corners of the world to help you to help assist you in the project. Well, when I say in four corners of the world, I, I had to basically just ask everybody, you know, anybody that had any kind of knowledge, hey, do you know how to do this? Do you know how to do that? And I put, put a little piece here, a little piece there, and, you know, and, and, and came up with, you know, just a, a a website. And that's where it basically started. The site is, is basically at its at its core is the same as it was when I first started it. I wanted to have a social media site. But I also wanted to have a site that did more than just social media because it doesn't make any sense for us to try to reinvent the wheel with uh, Facebook, you know, because Facebook, nobody's going to beat them. You know, that's like Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson in one body. You just ain't going to get beat. You know, you just get that one up. The only thing you can do is try to just come up with something, something else for yourself. So I figured, you know, our time now needed to be for and by and about black people and um, have more than just the social media. So what I intended it for it to, to be is a uh, site that had a business aspect also. So that's where that's where we're basically uh, headed towards now is, you know, everybody knows this, the social part, but now we're, we're getting the media, I mean, the uh, business aspect along with it. Okay. Okay. So, so from, a, from a personal development aspect, Again, there were some things you had to learn because, as you mentioned, you were not technical. Talk about the process, your, your learning process, 
uh, the learning curve and what exactly you had to go through to learn how to begin to develop your social media site. Well, I'm still learning. Um, <laughs> uh, school is not out. Uh, <laughs> I learned something. I learn something new every day. I just learned something last week. <laughs> you know that that uh, I need. I need to actually learn some some more. But uh, you know, uh, I I really just like I said. I just pick up little pieces here and there. I pick up little rocks here. I got the site, um, and then I learned how to do you know, how to add features and how to add this and that. So I'm still not, not technical because I'm still, you know, still learning on how to do this stuff. But, you know, um, like I said, just asking people that do have the knowledge. I have one friend that uh, that helps me out. Um, he he also has a uh, a black-owned site, First Black America. He, he uh, His name is Justin, and he, he, he helps me out a great deal. Um, so we partnered together, you know, on that to, do. to get black people, you know, engaged in our businesses. Like I said, it's, it's basically I don't I can't give you a, a direct, concise answer because it, it changes, you know, all the time. I mean, only thing I do if it wasn't for people, you know, helping me when I had a question, I wouldn't be anywhere. Okay. Well, you know, what I'm hearing is a couple of things. I'm hearing one, you know, your your ability to network and collaborate with people in order to help you uh, keep your site up to date or to build your site. And as it continues to grow uh, on a day-to-day basis, you're learning something new. I also hear your ability to adapt to, to situations and environment. And you mentioned that you were in the military. Um, and so I would imagine that, um, you know, that was a skill um, that was, was learned there as well. So, you know, given the fact that you've built this social media site, how has it changed your life thus far? Well, our time now has uh, changed my life because uh, just to give you a backstory on it, I, I really, I just had the idea. You know, I, like I said, we're sitting on Facebook just say, hey, you know, we need our own website. Anybody know how to do this? And nobody put their hand up because nobody had no clue. So, you know, I, I went out there and tried to, how do you build a website? And I looked at about 15 different websites on information on how to do this. Um, so it, it's, it, it takes up a lot of of my time, um, mm. you know, majority of my day, I don't, I, I barely sleep, but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking <laughs> constantly, I'm constantly thinking about how I can build this because uh, our time, the name our time now came to me in a dream. You know, it's going to mm. sound kind of funny, but it actually came to me in a dream because I had no clue on how, on what to name it. You know, I was like, okay, just a black website. I don't know. And then, you know, I was half asleep, half awake one night. And then I said, huh, our time now. Okay, great. Now, how am I going to spell that? And, and you know, I, I spelled hour in, in time, which is basically a, uh, a play on words. But, you know, I said, okay, that should be a catchy name because our time now. Okay, because it is our time now. And it's an all-encompassing word slash phrase because mm-hmm. it, is, yes, it is, for black people, it is our time now. I mean, everything, if you look at, at society and the way things are going these days, um it is our time now to do something. It's our time now to, to get our families back together. It's our time now to build businesses. It's our time now to create uh, for our, and do for ourselves instead of begging others to do for us. So, I mean, it's an all-encompassing, and it's a no-compromise uh, word slash phrase. It's a word and a phrase together. You said a mouthful because I heard entrepreneurship. I heard persistent. I heard critical thinking. I heard creative and imaginative and innovative thinking in all that you just said because you're in the middle of the night, you're half asleep, you're half woke, and, and, and the name comes to you in, in, you know, in a dream. It takes a great deal of your time uh, because you must have the dedication uh, that an entrepreneur needs in order to make your business succeed. And, and just to let the listeners know, I am a member of Our Time Now. And uh, I have began to coach regularly, and I enjoy it. So I encourage others um, to to join it as well. What do you? Think? I do want to say this real quick before we get off that point. Um, when I started in 2012, there was, like I said, there were no other other sites around. And then a few months later, another site popped up, and you know, I was talking to the brother about it, you know, about it, and I said, and we were, you know. Comparing notes, I guess you could say, on how hard this was to get it get it going, and 
basically he fell by the wayside. <laughs> he fell off, and then another person came up, and they fell off. So it's been about five or six other websites that have come uh, since I've been around, and they all basically have have you know basically. I, I guess I could say I'm kind of like the godfather of, of of black social media in a way, as far as on this side. Now there are other black black owned sites around, but as far as social media, I guess I'm the godfather because everybody's come to me asking me questions, and they all have you know disappeared because they don't have the you know they don't have the the mission to help our people they trying to do it for monetary gain or to be popular or something because everybody wants to be the next celebrity but nobody wants to put in the work so they get in right. and then i tell them you know it's just hard this is going to cost you money and time and sleep and everything else and people are going to be bothering you asking you questions and can you do this and that and I need this and that and I want this and that and you try to fill everybody's everybody's basket and then when you look up and say hey I got it that person ain't there so just be prepared and they say oh no I got it and then they up for a minute and they go they go away cuz they just they not real you just mentioned the key word you mentioned mission so so tell us, what is your mission for our time now? Well, the, the the main mission and goal in my mind for our time now is to not only have a place that, you know, black people can go and have non-truncated conversations about our issues in our community like we can't have on Facebook, but also to be a meeting place for black business and customers. Because, uh, you know, give you an example. Somebody can come up with, uh, you can come up with Terry's T-shirts dot com, and you post all your your T-shirts on your website, and, and and you have a contact us page there, and you get back to the people maybe in twenty four to forty eight hours plus or minus. Um, but that's a that's a standoffish kind of way of doing business. That's the way white people do business. You know, I'll get back to you in twenty four to forty eight hours. With me. I wanted to have a place where we put both of them together. You have the social media and you have the business in one place because, you know, since Terry's on on our time now as a member, Terry creates a web store. Terry creates, sells Terry's T-shirts on our time now. You know, John can hit up Terry and say, hey, do you do custom orders? And Terry can give him an answer right now instead of Terry getting back to him in 24 to 48 hours when that when John has all forgot all about the question he asked, you know, so, I mean, that's the mission is to bring our people together, not for not only social, but also business. And, you know, uh, the main thing is uh, community. We have a commonality, which is us being black, and we need to rebuild the unity that we used to have before integration. You know, um, you, again, another important point, uh, another mouthful, because, you know, I've often posted on Facebook that Facebook could be a vehicle in which we come together, find our commonalities, and then take it offline. And what you're saying is we should do the same thing with our time now, but we don't necessarily have to take it offline. We can we can use it because the social, the social media allows us to connect with people across the globe, and that's a powerful medium, but I see most people using uh, the most popular social media as a, a means of entertainment versus a means of building community, of building businesses. Um, you know, when others are, are, are using it to, to build businesses and, and to, uh, to do, you know, to do business with each other. So that's an extremely uh, important point. What do you see? What do you see? How do you see the growth of our time now in the next two to three years? Um, I see, I see our time now expanding. My main goal. This this is what I want to do. I want to grow into from not only being online, but I also want to be in a again a brick and mortar situation. Mm -hmm. I want to have a an actual business office uh, so I can hire people um my main goal is i want to have a thing a, a a way to uh incorporate the internet with the people because everybody has a smartphone 
a lot of people have tablets. A lot of people have laptops and computers and stuff, but everybody has a cell phone. So we should be able to, you know, use this medium to do a lot of different things. But like I said, I want to do the brick and mortar thing because I want to get the little Ray Rays and Shaquandas and things off of the street and give them jobs. I mean, we look at, we look uh, uh, next door to the Asians and Hispanics and Jews and we see that they hire their own people. We need to be doing the exact same thing. It's no reason that we are not doing that. You know, I want to try to uh, create a, I've been working on trying to create a scholarship um, for our people also for for people in school. So I'm trying to, you know, expand it into being more than just a a website. I want it to be an actual, well, it is an actual business. It is incorporated. So, I mean, I'm just trying to get to the next level of, you know, having an actual walk in the door, how you, how you doing, welcome to our time now, <laughs> uh, business. Mm-hmm. Instead, of, instead of it just mm-hmm. being me and a few people that want to help me, you know, uh, I have some dedicated members on the site that I would like to give a job to, you know, to actually pay them for their time so we can stop going to other people's businesses, you know, volunteering our time, you know, to them and not doing anything for ourselves. You know, that's the main the main goal. Everyone that, I, uh, that joins the site, I, I consider like a family member. You know, we don't have any problems like you have on Facebook and, and Twitter and LinkedIn and things like that. And a lot of people, when they join, they can't handle that because they don't see the negativity. I, 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 I take the uh, Marcus Garvey model um, when, you know, when they were talking to him about going back to Africa, and he said, well, I don't plan on taking all black people back to Africa because if they're no good here, they're not going to be no good there. Same thing <laughs> with, with our time now. If you get on the site where you've seen, there's no negativity. There's no Little Wayne and Nicki Minaj videos and things like that. It's a family atmosphere everybody gets along you don't have no arguing um no no cursing people out or anything like that and some people get on there and they don't and they can't handle it and they run right back to facebook because their minds can't concept or can't process positivity <laughs> and that's fine yeah, that's, we don't need those things so we're dealing with just a certain group of people and if they want to wake themselves up then they can but if they don't want to then that's fine yes outstanding Source Nation, if you are just tuning in, you're listening to It's Your Time, Personal Development, Dr. Terry Jackson. Our special guest is Mr. Joy White, and he is the founder of Our Time Now. We are discussing developing a new technology. How does it facilitate personal development? Now, you just mentioned you want Our Time Now to be a hybrid, brick and mortar as well as the social so, social social media, because you see us building business, collaborating with each other, and becoming a more cohesive group of people. How do you plan on promoting our time now so that we can become a more cohesive and more of us who are like-minded people gravitate toward our time now? Well, people are starting to wake up from what I see on Facebook. People, uh, they send me inbox messages and tag me and post and some of these people I don't even know. And they're asking the same question. You know, I got banned. I got suspended. I got blocked. I got kicked off Facebook. My posts get disappear. I, I got 5,000 friends and only 200 of them see it or 100 of them see the post. You know, we need our own black site. And then the first thing they say is, hey, why don't you join our time now? And I was like, and I don't even know some of these people. And I'm like, how did you find out about me? Oh, because my friend told me about you. I'm like, okay, cool. You know, so people are starting to, you know, wake up and and uh, and see that, you know, see the value of our time now, along with the fact, like I said, it's been about four or five other sites that have come, and they, you know, they they took off like a rocket. You know, they had – hundreds of members real fast and then all of a sudden they disappeared and the site went down you know so they don't have the staying power and then they say man we need a real site we need a site that's actually going to be around and like i tell people you know on march 5th our time now will be four years old you know and i mean all these other sites they disappeared because they're not doing anything their mission they didn't have really a mission they just were trying to just get online because they didn't want to work with me 
<laughs> That's the bottom right. line. <laughs> you know, everybody's come to me asking me questions. I'm like, hey, we can work together. Oh yeah, let me think about it. And then they, the next post, uh, hey, I'm gonna start a, I'm gonna start a social media site. Really? Right. <laughs> okay. And then they disappear. So you know, I, 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 I love to help people. You know, as much as I can, I love to work with everyone. You know, but some people, you know, for whatever reason, they do whatever. I mean, I, you and my brother Tariq, now she, he, he joined our time now. He joined. People said, hey, brother, welcome to the site and everything, and then he ain't been back. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's quite a dilemma. And, and actually, uh, within our community, that's the million-dollar question, and that is, you know, that question is, why is it that we can't seem to find a way to do business with each other, but we openly do business with others and gladly give away our resource to others uh, versus supporting our own? Um, well, that's, that's a million dollar here's, question. Here's one, one part of it, I guess. Everybody wants to be a chief. Nobody wants to be an Indian. That's, that's, obviously, if you have an idea, you want to you wanna be in charge of it, and that's, that, that's only natural. Nobody wants to be coming off the bench. Everybody wants to start. But sometimes it's like, you know, if you already have something going, it would be easier to just work with that person to get that expanded. I have no problem with with, with, with working with anybody. I mean, Bill Gates didn't start Microsoft by itself. <laughs> you know, I mean, he eventually broke off from Steve Jobs and all, and, and uh, uh, Paul Allen and all those people, but they were working together to get Microsoft off the ground. And then, you know, it the chips fall fail where they may. But I have no problem with working with anybody. I don't have any problem in, you know, taking suggestions from anybody if they want to, you know, actually put in the work to be a partner because, like I said, this keeps me up every day, all day, you know. I mean, I have a bunch of different situations that I have to go, have to deal with in, for, in regards to our time now. But if somebody wants to help me, they got to be in. They can't just be half, you know, part-time, and that's where – you know, we have these problems that these, some of these people want all the glory, but they don't want to put in none of the work. You know, they want the Medal of Honor, but they don't want to be doing the work to get it. Right. That's 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 um that's, that's interesting also because you know I, I've often said what you said about Microsoft. It took a group of them to, to build Microsoft. Even Steve Jobs and Apple. You know, uh, what people don't know is uh, Steve Jobs. It was Wozniak who was the most important key to that equation. Steve Jobs had the better of the personality. And in doing ha- and in having the better of the personality, he was the guy up front. You know, Steve Jobs didn't code. He did not do any he couldn't code. He had the idea and he had the somewhat of the ability to talk with people uh, and get out in front of the crowd where the others didn't have that kind of personality. But Exactly. You know, it was about collaboration, as you're talking about. You know, people coming together, utilizing their specific skills so that you can build something together, and we have to learn to build together. Exactly. I mean, that's, like I said, I brought up uh, Brother uh, Tariq Nasheed because I had people coming to me saying, hey, Tariq Nasheed was talking about on this show, he, he want to start a, a website, a black web, social media site, blah, blah, blah. We told him about our time now. I'm like, cool. I'm thinking, in my head, I'm thinking, cool. You know, he'll see the site. He'll like, okay, cool, man. What can I do to help you out, brother? Because he, he put out three movies already about black unity and this and that, and we need to work together. I'm figuring, okay. Like I said, in my mind, <laughs> that, uh, you know, that this is what will happen. I, he joins. And he never posts again. Then, you know, one one of my admins hit, hit him up and was like, hey, brother, you know, the, the owner of the site wants to – you know, talk to you and see if we can, you know, work together or something. And, you know, that was it. <laughs> like, wait a minute. You know, like, where is all this, all this, you know, unity at? I mean, this is the problem. Not just putting him on front street or anything. I'm not talking bad about the brother. But this is what I've run up against in four years. You know, like I said, that's why, I, you know, I thank the universe for sending uh, Brother Justin to me because, I mean, he's helped me out. You know, he got me out of uh, he pulled me out of a burning building a couple of times. You know, when everybody else was like, "Oh, well, I can't do that. I got to go." I mean, I have a whole bunch of other people also. I mean, but I'm just saying as far as the technical side, like you talked about, Steve Jobs can't code. I can't code. I don't know nothing about that. 
but he does. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, he he's helped me fix things that, you know, I messed up. But, uh, you know, he's helped me. So, I mean, I, you know, I have no problem working with people because, you know, you can't you can't do everything by yourself. Some people need some help, and that's you know, and that's you know, teamwork makes the dream work. Exactly, and 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 you know, uh, we as entrepreneurs run up against all kinds of obstacles, especially, uh, and I hate to say this in this day and time, but it's the absolute truth, especially as an African American entrepreneur or visionary. I'm gonna use the word visionary because a lot of us don't have the entrepreneurial spirit. Or the vision to even to take to have the courage to try to, to to become an entrepreneur, and so with that, it's about being a visionary. And so I've run into some of the same obstacles that that you, that, that you have. And and I guess the question is, how can we overcome the obstacles of reaching out to our own who continue to preach the message of unity and working together, yet? When you reach out, there's either no response or um, you get a response that says, you know, they work with their friends and they are more interested in being celebrities than than, 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 than leaders. How, how do you combat that? Well, I mean, four years of working on Our Time Now has taught me that, you know, you just have to meet people where they are. <laughs> you know, I mean, if they want to help you, they want to help you. I've had one guy when I first started. I thought he wanted to help me, but he was just using our time now to to, to uh, you know to, to to pump up his status to to catch women. Um, you know, people lie. He was lying, saying that he owned our time now, and I work for him, and all this and that. You know, and you know it just is what it is. I can't change can't change you. You know, that's just what it is. Um, you have some people that that are really want to help you, but only to a point. You know, and and it all boils down to, you know, what you can do for them. You know, that's the thing. You know, it's all about what they can get out of it. But you know, I've told everybody, I was like, I have no problem with you helping me, but you gotta, you know, you gotta put in what I put in. I'm not gonna give you part of my business just because you want to be part of the business. I got four years of blood, sweat, and tears in this. You know, you just come in because you know how to do this and that. That's great, but I can't, you know, I'm not going to give up nothing unless you, you know, you putting in the sweat equity also, you know. Right. That's the, the biggest thing. Right. I would agree. I would agree. And, and, and oftentimes we don't, we don't understand, um, you know, that, you know, that we have to make that investment. We think there are instant entrepreneurs out there, instant successes. And that's just not the case. I read a book some years ago. It was a book by Malcolm Gladwell, and it talked about outliers. Outliers meaning those who have been extremely successful and how they were not overnight successes. You know, he talked about 10 years, 10,000 hours. That is, at minimum, the metrics of success. 10 years, 10,000 hours. So if you look at anybody that we consider to be successful, be it athletes, be it entrepreneurs, be it musicians, 10 years, 10,000 hours honing their craft. Now, let me ask you this question because you've been at this for quite some time. How many hours and how many years have you been at it? You Four years, and I don't know how, how many hours. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even counted up the hours. It had to be way more, close to, if not over 10,000, because, I mean, like I said, I, I'm up until – 10, 11 o'clock at night, you know, on our time now, talking to people, trying to figure out how I can get this and that, looking at other sites, trying to find features that people need, want, and desire, you know, on the site. Um, not only with our time now, but also I created a kid's site um, called Kids Time, K-I-D-D-Z-T-Y-M-E. So I created the kid's site, and the reason I created the kid's site because I saw so many kids um, and stories on Facebook about how uh, kids would, you know, come up missing and things of that nature, you know, and last time they heard from them 
was on Facebook, and their parents were, were begging, pleading Facebook to give them information on their, on their kids' whereabouts, and they told them, you know, go jump in the lake or we need a search warrant and things like that. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. Why are these kids on the site with adults? These kids need their own. So that's why I created right. that. But once again, people, you know, they're slow to join because, you know, you know, I guess the biggest the biggest hurdle I have in kids' time is for for everybody. But the biggest problem I have is that, it, it, you know, unless you have a big juggernaut company that's white-owned or something pushing it, it's not going to get out there. You know, and I don't have that. I don't have a big juggernaut company that's pushing um, either one of my sites. And that's cool because our time now is for us. But kids' time, you know, I would think that it would get – you know, more press, you know, or more use, but it, it's slow to grow, and it's okay. No big deal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's, it's interesting because amongst us, you are the typical, it, it, it's a typical entrepreneur. You know, <clears throat> most of our entrepreneurs, you know, you just finished your college degree. A, a lot of them, a lot of our entrepreneurs don't don't have college de- de- degrees, uh, and, and you just finished yours not too long ago. But you, you saw a need, and you're looking to fill the need, and the people have told you that it, there's a need, uh, but yet they haven't followed up as they said that they, they would. So um, how can we, you know, and again, I guess it's another million out of question. How can we prove that our ice is just as cold? With black people, that's a good question. That really is a good question because, you know, that's one thing that, that people, you know, have been doing with me, you know, for whatever reason, you know, why don't you have this? Why don't you open it up to everybody? And I'm like, dude, don't, you know, the whole purpose of the site is for black people. You can't see that. Then I, I, I can't help you. <laughs> you know, well, you should have everybody. You should have it open up to everybody. And I'm like, the whole part of me creating the site, I'm not trying to rebuild or redo or, reco- or copy Facebook. I'm trying to do is have something for us so we can have something for ourselves. And I'm, and this is coming from black people. They just can't see or can't process life without white people being involved. They can't, they, they can't mm. process doing anything for themselves. That's the biggest thing. That's what I'm trying to, to change, you know. Uh, we, we have to do something for ourselves and with ourselves first, and then we can worry about doing something with someone else. Do you think it has anything to do with having to hold yourself accountable when you when you create something and either it it fails or doesn't say or or it works? Is, is there a fear of accountability in the African American community? That too, because we 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 won't have anybody to blame but ourselves if it don't work. With me, I got I I look at it like this: I ran for uh, L.A. school board member. In 2006, I think it was, um, no money, no connections, nothing. I just said, okay, how do I do this? And I went down to the city hall, got the paperwork, filled it out, did all my stuff, <laughs> and I tried. I, I had to get signatures. I stand out front of the grocery stores in the rain and everything trying to get signatures just so I can see what the process is. It cost me $300, but at least I got that knowledge. But right. I consider that a success because if I didn't try, I got nothing. You know, so right. same thing with with our time now and kids' time. If I didn't try, then I and I'm just sitting here talking, like majority of the people are on Facebook. Then I got nothing. People tell me all the time, "Oh, well, you ain't got nothing. You ain't doing nothing." I'm like, "Look, I got a hundred percent on on getting this done because I got a site. I just incorporated. I have a business license. It, you know, I get corporate tax breaks just like white people do." You can do the same thing. Right. I'm not the brightest person in the world. And if it don't work, it don't work. But at least you tried. Because at least I got that bullet in my gun to say, I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that. Now, what did you do? And they and right. they just stand there and look stupid. That's what I want. Not saying I want black people to look stupid. I'm just saying that when the naysayers come to you saying, what did you do? When when, when it all boils down to it and you laid in the ground with, and you have to go face your ancestors, and they ask you, what did you do to further our memory? And what did you do to benefit the race? If all you could say you did was, I lived, <laughs> you did nothing. Mm-hmm. You spent 60, right. 70 years on the earth and did nothing for real? 
What kind of legacy that's, did you leave? What exactly, kind of you and leave? that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do something for my kids, and my kids, that's the reason I created Kids Time. My daughter, my, well, my, my kids came to me and said, I want my own website. And I said, okay, cool. So I created Kids Time. Now, they don't work because they're kids. But I mean, you know, at least they had the mm-hmm. desire and the not and the, and the idea in their head that they wanted something other than I want a big wheel, I want some video games, I want a business. So okay, cool. So I, if I can do it, I'm gonna do it. So at least I gave them a seed, you know, and that's what we need to do. If everybody gets a seed and puts it in the ground, then if you get something, cool. If you don't get something, at least you did something. At least you tried. Well, it's no, it's no try. It's a hundred percent success rate on on doing. Because if you yes, did it, right. then and it, you know, if you did it, you did it. If you didn't do it, then you didn't do it. That's the whole thing. There is no try. It's either you did that's or right. you didn't. That's right. At least You're that's the way I look at it. I like that. I agree with you one hundred percent on that. If there were any aspiring entrepreneurs out there, young who may even be more technically savvy than yourself, and they were looking to become an entrepreneur, start something from a social media or technology base, what pieces of advice would you have to give them? I would say if you have an idea, just go ahead and get it done. (laughs) Just do it. I had a sister on Facebook that wanted to start a assistant living home business, and she was like, well, I'm thinking about when I got to get the funding and I got to do this and that. And all the people who don't have a business that ain't trying to get a business said, oh, well, just wait till you get the money. Wait till you get the credit. Wait till you this. Wait till you that. I said, look, don't wait. If you got the idea, just go ahead and start it. It ain't hard. Just get the paperwork, get the legal paperwork going, and get moving. And she inboxed me and said, you know what, thank you, because I was sitting here listening to all these people. And I said, look, you know, I'm going to listen to what he's saying, because I told her, I said, I started our time now and had no clue on how to do a business. So what did I do? I called LegalZoom, and they did, and they told me how to do the paperwork and, and sent me all everything, and now our time now is incorporated. So I can... You know, I can play the game the same way white people play. That's what I told her. I said, you got you to gotta play the game the way the game is played, you know. And, it, and and everything is not about black and white, but you have to look at it like that because the world is set up that way. So you have to look at it like it's black and white. So I got paperwork. I got the website. And I work on it every day. That's the only thing. But if you don't have anything to work on to make yourself better, you won't have anything. Sitting there thinking about it will never get you the product. That's true. That is true. That is true. If someone was interested in talking to you about entrepreneurship or either having you come out and speak, how would they uh, contact you? What is your contact information? Well, obviously, they can always hit me on (laughs) OurTimeNow.com. You'll get me faster that way for sure because I'm on the site all day it stays logged in on my phone so I'm, I'm always on the site if they wanted to call me they could call me also hopefully they don't be playing on my phone <laughs> but uh it's 323-385-6609 mm-hmm. you know that's the easiest two ways that you can you can get in contact with me and you know i have no problem with trying to help anybody like i said this year um i'm thinking about trying to try this scholarship thing again last year i tried it to create a our time now college scholarship but it didn't pan out well because once again the people that were supposed to help me they said they had the connections they disappeared on me <laughs> so this time i'm gonna have to do okay. it by myself <laughs> i got you yeah. i understand so, i understand i know your passion you know joy for for, our, for your people I, I know and understand your passion so if you had one wish for us, what would it be? I wish that we would, as a people, would wake up and see our actual power. We always look at white people and others as, you know, trying to keep us down. But the only reason they're trying to keep us down is because if we actually got up, then the game would be over for them, you know? And if we could see that and we could teach our children 
of our potential, our, our, not potential, but, well, I guess our potential power than what we could have if we did wake up, we would be better off as a race. We wouldn't be begging people for jobs and begging people for justice and begging people to treat us humanely. You know, we we would have our own and wouldn't be worried about those people. So that's what I would wish that our people, uh, 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 that would be my one wish is for our people to wake up and see where we are supposed to be in this world. We were there once and we could be there again if we unify. Unity is spelled with you and I first. So if there is no you, there is no us. And we can't get yes. anywhere without us. Yes, absolutely. Hey, I want to thank you so very much, Nancy, for, for, for being a guest on the show. It's been a wonderful conversation. I uh, learned a great deal about your vision for uh, our time now and your vision for, for our people. So thank you again for being a guest, George. Thank you, sir. You and your guests have a great Sunday. Yes, thank you so much. Source Nation, before I leave, I want to thank our sponsors once again, and they are Scott Cares Foundation, Meet My Types Matchmaking, Urban Grandstand Digital, Cat Photography, Kit Masters, New Covenant of Praise Worship Center, and PS Photography. Please stay tuned to our, our, our next outstanding host, Mr. Tim T., who is our Renaissance Relationship Therapy Coach, as he has another great show for you this evening. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you next week. Mm-hmm.